Today we're going to be dissecting the leaked rules from Games Workshop's preview of the Orc rules from Saga of the Beast, and seeing what it might mean for the Orc armies going forward. Hello and welcome back to Orc Specs Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we'll be looking through the Warhammer Community Preview and seeing what we can infer from this about these rules from the Orcs from Saga of the Beast. There's quite a lot of good stuff here, so let's take a look. The article starts first with some previews from Gaskell Thracker, but at this point there are all rules that we already know. If you haven't already, then you can check out my video on Monday about him, where we went through his rules piece by piece already. We're going to focus on everything else in this video. From what they've told us in this video, it sounds like Orcs are getting the new data sheet for Gaskell and Makari, seven new clan specific psychic powers, an interesting specialist mob detachment rule, which sounds like they replace the clan culture and are geared towards certain specific units, the option for custom Orc vehicles, where you can give one or more Orc vehicles an upgrade, and finally a bunch of new stratagems. So basically five areas of new rules, Gaskell's rules, the new powers, the new stratagems, custom vehicles, and specialist mob rules. Each of the primary orc clans and the freebooters will all get a new psychic power, and you take it instead of generating one from the war discipline. The one that they've shown off for the blood axes is called Clever Talk, and it represents the idea of a psyker tuning into enemy radio stations, and saying it out loud for the rest of the boys to hear. I really quite like the idea of it myself, I think it's quite a fun idea for an orc psychic power, and certainly fits in with the blood axes tactics. It has a warp charge of 6, and you select any enemy unit visible to the Psyker. There isn't a minimum range on it, so it could be literally on the other side of the table. Until the end of the next Psychic phase, the unit can't fire Overwatch at Blood Axe units, and can't be chosen to fight until all eligible Blood Axe units from your army have done so. For me, the no Overwatch part is probably the best bit. Orc boys really are quite susceptible to Overwatch, and might eat quite a few casualties from wading into mass enemy fire. They do only have their 6 plus t-shirt saves after all, so being able to just turn off overwatch like that is a great plus for the blood axes. Can't wait to see what some of the others are like. Next we'll move on to the specialist mobs rule, and they haven't told us exactly how these work yet. They say that specialist mobs are a fun and flavourful way of building an orc army, and you get to choose the benefit from a unique subculture related to the specialist mob that you choose. To me this very much sounds like you'd pick a detachment of orcs, and then you'd nominate them to get this subculture as opposed to one of the main clan cultures. That is a guess, you might have some sort of weird detachment mixing special rules, and we don't know if you're limited in the number of subcultures that you can play with. The one that they've teased is called Pyromaniacs, dedicated to all of the orcs who like to set things on fire. It allows you to re-roll any and all of the dice when determining the number of shots made for burners, scorchers, burner bottles, burner exhausts, killer jets and scorcher missiles. A lot of these are d6 shot weapons, and re-rolling the dice on these will typically equate to around about a 20% damage boost, so it's not huge, but it's certainly not nothing either. Furthermore, when you attack with a burner in melee, you can re-roll the wound roll, which is particularly handy seeing as they only attack at strength user, so it can actually help get those high AP wounds through, which is very nice. And finally, when you're resolving the burner bombs ability for the burner bomber, this one usually does mortal wounds on fives when it flies over enemy infantry units. You can add one to the roll, so it'll be doing those wounds on fours rather than fives. We'll be getting back to the burner bomber later, because there's another stratagem here, which I think will definitely be giving it a new lease of life. Overall, I do think that this culture could be usable, if you are looking to make the orc flame weapons into one of your main sources of damage output. I must say, I don't think that they're some of the strongest options that the orcs have available, so I'm not too sure how widely this one will be played, but it certainly could be fun if you do have the models available, and give you an option to get some amped up damage output by fielding units with this subculture. I'll be really interested to see what the other ones are, and how easy they are to include in your army in the first place. That's really something that could make or break these things. Interestingly, these appear to be instead of any sort of custom clan rules, so it doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of option for designing your own clan with two different traits. Again, I might be wrong, but they've not mentioned it yet. Next up, we have the option for custom jobs. These are vehicle upgrades that look not dissimilar to the Imperial Guard tank ace ability that we saw in the Greater Good. From what they say in the preview, it sounds like you can use a stratagem to get one into your army. I suspect it'll just be one command point, and probably be an auto-include, much like the tank ace, if, if you're running some of the vehicles that it applies to. You can also take another one for free if you use a mechboy workshop in your army. 
Now the rules for these aren't particularly impressive at the moment, they cost 80 points, and you don't really get much for them in return. They can augment some orc vehicles, but to do so means they can't move or shoot in the same turn, so it very rarely actually makes any sense to do the augmentation rather than just have the unit move and shoot normally turn 1, rather than hang about in the mechboy workshop while they get slightly upgraded. I'm honestly not sure that even getting a free custom job ability on another vehicle will be worth the 80 points worth paying for it, but I guess we'll have to see the full list and see if there are some really powerful ones. The one they've previewed for us is called Orchimatic Pistons, to make some cans walk a little bit faster across the battlefield. This one's applied to one killer can Death Dread Morganaut or Gorkonaut unit, and you add 3 inches to its move characteristic, and can re-roll advanced rolls as well. Now that is a pretty impressive movement boost, maybe it could be good on a big mob of cans or something, but I strongly suspect that we'll see other options that are stronger than this, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the various options are. I'm sure there'll be plenty of things for those new buggies that they released in October, the year before last. Like I said, I imagine that the stratagem to buy one in would probably be one command point, like the guard one. And if the abilities are anything like the tank ace abilities, then if you include one of the orc vehicles, then it's likely going to be an auto-include. Let's take a look at some of these stratagems now. I've shown off two in this article, and one on the Warhammer Community Facebook page. Firstly, we have Clever Spanner, where if your mob of looters or burners contains at least one spanner boy, then by using this stratagem, you get to re-roll the number of shots for your burners and death guns each turn. With D3 shot weapons, you're typically only ever going to be re-rolling those ones, and it all equates to a roughly 70% increase in damage output throughout the battle. Possibly could be worth it if you are thinking about using a big looter death star, where you're giving them loads of stratagems, and maybe shooting twice with the bad moon stratagem but otherwise it might just be better to save the command point and just use it to re-roll that one if and when you do roll it. It will cost you two command points for a big unit of looters or burners, so it's a pretty hefty investment for something that's only going to ever come into effect one in every three turns. So it does definitely increase damage output, but I think it's just a little bit on the borderline as to whether most people are actually going to bother using this one, not least because it means that at least one of your looters will have to be a spanner instead, which means you won't be getting a death gun and usually you want as many of those as possible. The next one though I think is very very powerful indeed. Fly in Edbutt is a stratagem that allows an orc fighter pilot to fly his plane directly into the enemy lines and blow it up. Yes we really do have some disturbing orc kamikaze suicide planes on the go. Basically you trigger it at the end of your movement phase so you won't have been able to fire your guns this turn but if the plane had any bombs then you can drop them before using this. Now if you've listened to several of my videos then you'll know that I'm a massive fan of anything that can auto blow up vehicles just because you can be handing out a massive amount of mortal wounds to all and sundry around you. There is one orc plane that's far better than the others for this, and that is the Burner Bomber. The reason that the Burner Bomber is so great for this role is that its crash and burn rule automatically hands out a flat 3 mortal wounds to all the units within 6 inches of it. It costs 132 points, and for that you could have a plane that flies straight over, hopefully gets right to the heart of the enemy lines, and detonates itself giving 3 mortal wounds hopefully to a sizable portion of the enemy army. Flyer bases are really big, and provided you can find somewhere for it to land just 1 inches outside of any other enemy units, you could potentially cover a huge amount of enemy units with that radius. Furthermore, because the burner bomber does have bombs, you can also drop a bomb on an enemy infantry unit before you even detonate, and say if you took three of them in that new pyromaniacs detachment, if you managed to hit a unit of 10 models strong, then you could be doing another 5 mortal wounds on average to that too. It really is a very nice way to soften up an enemy army. Even if you're not thinking about ploughing these directly into enemy lines, I think that just having this stratagem available is really useful for your orc flyboys. You could have them fly around the battlefield for the first turn or two, and if they start to take too much damage and become a bit useless, you can always just think about ploughing them straight into enemy lines and going out with a bang. I do really like this one, and I think it'd be really good fun to try out. Finally, from the Warhammer Facebook page, we have another one command point stratagem, and this one's called Da Biggest Boss. I believe that this one's trying to represent the Overlord of Awar, or something like that. It seems very similar to the Chapter Master stratagem for Codex Space Marines, but giving far more orky benefits. Basically, you use it before the battle, it costs one command point, and you can't use it if your army includes Gazgul Thraka, as I guess he already is the biggest boss. For this one command point investment, you get plus one wound, plus one attack, and a four plus inball save. And you can only use it once per battle, so that's only one war boss that you can augment in this way. 
To be honest, just gaining an extra attack is really quite decent, particularly if you're thinking about giving the war boss something like the killer claw, because you want to be swinging with that thing as many times as possible. But it also is a pretty decent durability boost in plus one wound and that four plus invul as well. I think this one could easily be worth one command point if you're thinking about getting a war boss into the thick of the fighting. I do like the way that it stacks both with warlord traits and relics as well, meaning that you could have an incredibly mean fighty war boss that no character is going to want to tangle with. So that's it for the preview. I think there's quite a lot of good stuff here, maybe some a bit more useful than others, but plenty of hints of potential good things to come in the main book. I guess we'll have to see how it all shakes out. I'll most certainly be covering the rules as soon as we have them available to us, so feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see that. We'll also be doing some in-depth unit reviews on Orc units over the coming weeks. It's going to be good to do some justice to a Xenos faction on the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page which you can find the link in the description below. Making all these videos does take quite a bit of time, and Patreon is what allows me to do this as a bit more of a full-time thing, rather than just as and when in weekends and evenings. So if you are enjoying the videos regularly, any support you might be prepared to give the channel would be absolutely amazing, as it will certainly help keep these videos coming. And a big thank you to all of you guys who are already supporting the channel, you're amazing. In any case, thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.